All right, what's up, everyone? We got another Chicago Beer Pass Cellar Raid. Nick and I had to bring in help for this one. Man, Steve's here. Hello, I'm help. <laughs> <laughs> so we are drinking four years of Abyss. We have uh, 2007, 2009, 2010, and 2011. From Deschutes. God help us all. Yeah. Uh, ben Dorigan, class of 1988. Yeah, so they're uh, one of those Goose Island crews. Um, last time I opened these up, these are all waxed, so these are like super dangerous. I kind of want to help, man. I don't know if I have a... <laughs> oh, you got here. Brad's got a knife, There's and a... that's my cue to leave. <laughs> um, what's this one is next, right? Yeah, so have you guys had any of the Abyss before? Of the big badass stouts around... I, I don't get to this one often. I, I couldn't okay. tell you the last time I had a, an abyss. Should we hit them all? Yeah, let's just open them all up and we'll dive into them. How about you, Steve? Have you seen abyss? Have you had it? I brought uh, a bottle back when I went out to Portland and stopped at Deschutes, among other places. That opener must this be one? better, yeah. Try okay. It. Actually, I think it might still be in my cellar somewhere. Okay. I don't know if I opened that one yet. There was concern that many of the abysses were sour. Yeah. So, yeah, see this opener? Oh, uh, yeah. Little, opener is way better. A little shout plug out. for Salmoth. <laughs> shout <laughs> this out. This is a proper, uh, proper opener here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Easy money. So, because these went sour, I've kind of just been sitting on them because I had no desire to open them. And, uh, you know, drinking a bad beer is nothing you really want to do. Black wax every year? Yeah, Go ahead, Steve. Right. Um, and... Yeah, I believe these are black wax every year. I think they come out every year, unlike um, they have a series that comes out every couple years. Yeah. But this is every year, um, usually in, well, it says Best Buy. What's the Best Buy on this one? Some of them have a Best Buy a year later, so they recommend you selling these for about a year. <laughs> so we told you so a year. Yeah, we said a year. It doesn't right. develop in the bottle for five years? I thought that's what everybody was doing. Right. That's Best what all the cool kids are doing. 2007, so we're a full decade late on this one. Yeah. Uh, so 2007. So the Abyss, um, according to this one, brewed with blackstrap molasses, licorice, cherry bark, and vanilla? And it's like a... Partially aged in oak barrels. It's like they're blending different ones. Yeah. They they blend an oak, <laughs> an oak, a wine, and a uh, and a bourbon barrel. Eleven percent of each. So that's, a, that's just. Do they all say that? Yeah. They're all. This is all the same. Yeah. Huh. I, I guess I never knew that about this. Huh. Um, it's a great beer when it's fresh. When you're first having it. Uh, it has it has all those properties that licorice, that oak, that bourbon that you kind of want out of it, but. Man, this 2007, it smells sweet and, like, cherry. It doesn't smell like, like, basement, like, I guess, cardboardy at all. No, my palate is the most inferior amongst us, but it doesn't taste or smell that sour. No, it has, like, a tartness to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't taste sour. Um, but it's... It feels like it's mi it's missing a lot of flavor, right? Yeah. It's like um, almost if you were to bite into a, a chocolate covered cherry kind, mm -hmm. you might get some of that. You're like, oh, yeah, that's fine, or like a yeah. Now it's just kind of all just kind of one note, kind of like bitter and like kind of uh, what's that chocolate without the sugar? Like cocoa. like a, the cocoa, the cocoa or a baker's chocolate. Yeah, that's yeah, kind. Of, I just get that chocolate. one kind of bland mm -hmm. note in it. It smells a lot more interesting than yeah. it tastes yeah. at this point. It doesn't have much sweetness. I, I think the chocolatey notes are <clears throat> devoid of sweetness. Hmm. But yeah, I was smelling some of that. Um, I, can sm of I can smell the licorice. I can't taste it. Exactly. Okay. All right. I'm not. I'm soft, gonna, soft I'm cherry and vanilla. My oh, other glass to pour into. <laughs> Do that. I'll go into this uh, 2009. Black licorice, man. I, I found this recipe for like, uh, you know, it was like black licorice. No, no, I'm sorry. Black strap molasses and like uh, apple cider vinegar, right? And you're supposed to like teaspoon of this and that, a little baking soda, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's supposed to be, <laughs> you live live to your 90 or something, right? Yeah. And I couldn't stand the black strap molasses. <laughs> I, I was checking in my drawers the other day and I saw this like, 
quarter of it missing from the blackstrap molasses bottle I bought because I just couldn't get through it. Couldn't do it. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. So two thousand. I poured out some two thousand nine here. All right. Yeah. And it smells more of that like aged um, nine. Yeah. It smells more of that aged cardboard, uh, kind of wet basement that you've been uh, accustomed to when you have an aged beer. You're getting a little more tartness. I'm sure Deschutes would tell us, well, if you had just followed the instructions you did what on we the asked bottle. You, to do. you had one job. But they had that, <laughs> you know, they were running the issue where people like Goose Island, where oh, people wow. were having these sour beers. This one smells like fucking... Madame Rose or something here. Really? You're getting Madame Rose out of this? I kind of I kind of am too. Man. There's just a there's a there's like a little cherry flump going on. Okay. Yeah. Like well that's probably there's... that sourness they yeah. didn't want. Hmm. Yeah. So that one that one's sour. And it sucks because it Whoa, looks that's it looks great. Really sour. But it's not wow. it's not like bad sour, but it's sour. But that's never – it's it's never something that I expect whenever – I'm going to crack open a nice stout. And, <laughs> and I'm going to expect to be punched in the face with sour. Yeah. This incidental souriness. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, like, I don't – it's sour, but I don't hate it. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know? We were talking on a <laughs> recent episode of Chicago Beer Pass about Hailstorm that dumped out the sour beer. Yeah. And this is something you run into where – Oh, they could have just branded this as maybe Abyss Sour <laughs> and kind of gone right. from there. And people have been like, oh, cool. We trust you, Deschutes. But <laughs> uh, yeah, you miss all that licorice, any of that oak. You just get this weird tartness, right? Yeah. Mm. Hmm. I'm going to, once again, I'm the ignoramus of the group, but is the, the tartness is accidental or due to. <laughs> Some introduction of a of a yeast strain or a bacteria that is that is not supposed to be there. Is that uh, am I correct on that? That's about the size okay. of it. Yeah, you see it at Fobab sometimes too, mm-hmm. where they'll tell you that a beer you know it's, it's supposed to be this barrel aged out with vanilla, and when you smell it and taste it, you don't get those things at all. Mm-hmm. You just get this really odd tart berry note. You're like, well, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> yeah, right now. Um, yeah, it's usually because something was in the bottle or something happened in the bottling or the barrel, something happened in the bottling line. Um, yeah, yeah, we've seen, maybe um, someone didn't clean something right that they tapped it. It, it could be um, the bottle caps we've heard. We've heard numerous things. Like, it could be the bottle yeah. cap. Yeah. It could be the bottle filler. You know, in, in Goose's case, a few years ago, some people blame the, uh, you know, how when they're trying to get the devil's cut out of a beer, these distilleries. I'm yeah. sorry, just trying to get the devil's cut out of the whiskey. Yeah. The yeah. distillery is. So they'll dump the they'll dump it like they normally do, but then they'll wait a couple wait a week and fill it with some water and try to get some more of the of the devil's cut out. Sure. And then they give when they're done with that process, then they give it to a brewery. Mm-hmm. Well at that point you've introduced some You've sort introduced of some contaminants com- yeah. into the into the barrel, which yeah. could okay. So I mean there's a number of reasons why it could go that way. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well and I think that sour the introduction of unintended sour flavors to beer is often detrimental just because sour is an overwhelming flavor. It's it's the first thing you notice. It's going to be the thing that, I'm going to use my analogy that I'm beating to death now, but punches you in the face when you, when you, when you try a beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now I've poured the 2010 Abyss. Uh, it definitely has a stronger aroma to it. Um, it doesn't... It smell it. This one has the out of the three the most the cardboard kind of just aged aroma to it, but it doesn't taste um, sour. Where the two thousand nine two thousand nine definitely tasted sour, but still brewed the same way Wait, which with one you guys that, on? Sorry. that one. Yeah, right, cool. yeah one that one. Your hand. Like, uh, still brewed the same way with that thirty three aged and oak and mm. oak bourbon barrels. So um, that's. Interesting to see how some of these beers hold up over over time, and when you're having these in like a a vertical like this, you get to see maybe each year is supposed to be the same, but how different they can be yeah. from one year to the other. Eleven percent beer for the most part, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, very similar in aroma to the to the nine. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess that would be the ten, right? No, that's yeah. the nine. Yeah. Okay. We're drinking the 10 now. We're drinking 10 now. Yeah. <laughs> 9 and 10. Sour, but 
Yeah, it smells sour. It but smells I don't get the flavor. Cardboard, wet basement, but yeah, which sucks too. Right, I, I was tempted to skip it when I heard you describe it as, oh yeah, cardboard and wet basement. Yeah. Oh, Okay, I don't know if I can think of two less appetizing terms yeah. to describe. But we here. all know those. We've probably been in mm-hmm. a grandparent's basement or a crawl space. Crawl and, space. And you're just like... As a kid going to get that goddamn tree. Yeah, you're getting <laughs> the Christmas, Christmas ornaments or you're getting out something yeah. out of there. And you're like, uh, what? You, why do you guys need this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> why is it here? <laughs> I grew up in a house that was built in 1908. And there was an actual coal room in the back. And as a kid, I would walk downstairs. And it was just... The there be dragons space, and I was absolutely terrified to go in there. <laughs> As an adult, I went in there and I went, "What the hell was I scared of?" So how do you? How does the 2010? I feel like it's the weakest. Yeah, it's like, the most, the least potent flavor, I would say, of the three we've had so yeah. far. It has a it has like a hoppy, yeah. like a a bitter taste on yeah. the end. Um, yeah, I think um, I definitely like it more than, and I'm confusing my years here, I definitely like it more than the 9. The sour. I agree. Yeah. I think it smells like the 9, but doesn't taste like the 9. The, the flavor's a lot more subtle. There's yeah. not the... It when, I, when I tasted the 9, the first thing was, okay, it's sour, but I don't, I don't have that same impression with the 10. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this one's kind of the... Um, Finishes more like this one. Mm-hmm. Than the seven. Yeah. It smells like the nine, but it finishes like the seven. I think might be a fair statement. Yeah. So yeah, we're only missing. We're only missing the eight in this lineup here. That's pretty Brad, good that you, you had got one job. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make it out to Portland every <laughs> every abyss release, guys. I'm sorry. No, I think we've all been to Portland, and we do we we've been to the shoots. I haven't been to the mm-hmm. shoots. You guys been to the shoots? I've been. Yeah, I've all been right. to the shoots in Portland. Well, that's not in, in Bend. Yeah, because Bend is not right. Like I, I've been near. to the Portland to shoots. Yeah, we mm-hmm. didn't make the trip out to Bend, but yeah. Right. Ben's kind of like it's not like a suburb. Ben's like its own a whole other thing. Ben's ben is, ben is out there. Yeah. yeah. Ben is to Portland what Bourbon A is to Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Like yeah, Ben's closer to uh, Boise, Idaho. Oh wow. Like it's it's not far from there. Okay. I do like Portland though, man. Mm-hmm. The only time I have went, I was. Kind of, <clears throat> I didn't really want my normal life to continue. I wanted to stay a little longer. <laughs> and, live that Portlandia and, and life. Oh, yeah, that Portland vibe a little longer, man. That's, what, that's fun up there. Yeah, Portland, Portland is a real, real, real neat town. All right. So, we're going to it. I thought, you know, every, Portland likes to tout themselves as weird. So does Austin. And it was like, okay, this is going to settle the question. Who's more weird, Austin or Portland? <laughs> Austin's a good city, too. Love it. Um, Love it. You can... Uh, Oh, yeah, but you can, I don't know, man. It's like endless beer destinations in Portland. Mm -hmm. Oh, indeed. Yep. I don't think I had, I think I had heard of Cascade, but never had one of their beers before. And I think of all the breweries that we went to, and I went to a bunch, Cascade was probably at the top of my list. Shameless plug, of course, (laughs) but. Uh, It's the only place we went to twice on my Portland Mm, excursion. Okay. Because they got the really cool, um, it's almost like the front porch kind of, where it's like, you know, that outdoor, their outdoor seating. Yeah, the outdoor area is neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you almost. I, if memory serves me, you have to walk through that just to get to the main brewery, That's or true. walk right by it to yeah. get to the to get inside. Um, so the last one here is the 2011. I poured out some. This may be the worst, guys. Really? This might be the worst, which is pretty ridiculous uh, when you think about all these. I did not see that coming. No, you you often look at aged beers and you kind of expect. The oldest one to be the most like, uh, oh, the most flaws, right? Yeah, the mm-hmm. most, yeah. yeah. But in this case, there's something about 2011 that it's it smells sour and tastes. I would just say gross. <laughs> like there's not. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb. Are we I'm just pe- saying are, gross. Like <laughs> Brad, are are we in pizza beer gross territory here? No, or we're not quite? Um, I just didn't have like a after having the th- three previous ones. I didn't have like there's. It just didn't sit right with my palate. I couldn't. I couldn't really describe it. Yeah, you're almost at a point where, like, all right, um, I'm done. I'm done drinking after drinking this last beer. Yeah, right. That's that's, that's a mind. It doesn't say I will have another. Yeah. You know, you, when you drink uh, it, it, you don't say I'll have another. Do you know so why I could say it? Someone put a use your beer as their ashtray to put their cigarette in. 
and it tastes like that and it's stale and it has that barrel like oakiness to it but you're like what did someone put in this like what is and you're like oh there's a cigarette butt in here yeah, I th- think um, for me, like... <laughs> you going to still try this, whatever. Steve? <laughs> you should get in there, Steve. Well, I, and, you know, it's a shame, too, man, because... I'm they not all, so sure about that. They all have this really cool, like, you know, it's, you know, it's ink, it's it's ink black, but it's got the really cool kind of chocolate milk-covered head. You know, yeah. it's like, it looks, it's fun to look oh, it at. It looks beautiful. Bro. Right, yeah. you know, there's still a lot of, you know, still a lot of carbonation there. But, yeah, when you drink it, it's a whole different thing. I like, um, it's weird to me how they all... This reminds me of like black IPAs when when they weren't uh, that's, done. That's true. That's a good. They weren't done very well. That's a good way to describe when you, it. When you brought up the ashtray, it reminded me of that. Like black IPAs, when they're really good, is you know hops and chocolate and delicious and you love yeah. it. And when they're not so good, kind of those burnt rubber <laughs> ash flavors. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think two of these years being sour. I don't know. Maybe it was the two thousand eight. That we didn't have, it completely ruined the Abyss brand. I don't even know if they do this beer anymore, but I think it tainted the whole series. Well, the, I know they do. Um, and we talked about it because we went to House and Hood. We recorded the show there, yeah. and they're doing like a, a black. Oh no, wait, the birthday birthday reserve. That's not Abyss though. That's Black Listen. Butte. Yeah, never mind. Forget they have Black Butte. Yeah, Sorry. Black Butte's yeah. another to shoots. Right, never dis- mind. Descent or Dissident, which is there every <clears throat> five years. But I think the Years that got sour hurt this whole brand, and I don't. Uh, when going to Portland, I don't see this beer or hear about this beer anymore. Mm. I think it kind of tainted it, and they're probably better off not releasing it anymore. Yeah. Well, I've still yet to taste the. What's the last? <laughs> 2011. One? Sorry, 2011. I confess, you two haven't sold it well. <laughs> <laughs> so let's. So here we go. I'm gonna go back to the first one because I think that's the one that's the most approachable still. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you th- what do you think, Steve? Diving into it here. <laughs> it's yeah. See, it's like a loss for words. I don't. I don't think it's n- quite as bad as. I don't think I, I. I don't think I'd be as critical of it as you've been. Okay. So now it is. It it's, it's, it smells sour mm-hmm. for starters. It's definitely got a funky funky smell to it. So Nick going back to nine. I think it's I don't I don't mind the twenty eleven. Okay. My yeah. palate's inferior to the to the two of you, but I don't mind it either. I went to um two thousand seven I think is the one that I'm most drawn to. I think that's it's closest to whatever the original intent was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the most interesting one was that um the one you were reaching for just now. The sour one. The eight, right? yeah, yeah, the one that was You're like, Madame Rose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Madame Rose. It's interesting. Yeah, it's it's a bit. <laughs> It it comes it comes on as a full on sour with fucking yeah. bread in it or something yeah and some fruit in it but then it tastes like it it reminds you of abyss but yeah. it doesn't smell like it at all okay yeah no yeah. but I'm I'm gonna throw my vote in probably for the seven just because I uh, the eight I don't know there's something about or the nine yeah. No way. Oh, the eight's. I'm sorry. The eight's the one that Brad couldn't get. Epic that. fail there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I. W- w- if 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 I open a stout and then I expect to get a sour and don't and or if I open a stout, I'm expecting a stout and all of a sudden, hey, I'm a sour. I don't know if it's expectation, disappointment, or what, but it's just it's it's not something that I'm. I I don't, I don't know. S- sour and stout just doesn't seem to go well. Yeah, I know. Um. Who is it? Jelly Pumpkin. Yeah. They, they do sour dark beers. They do, mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah, I've, I've run across very few. That it's not like something, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of like, I guess, maybe you could say a black IPA before they became a, a you know, a phenomenon, but... Mm. It quick, came, came and went. Came and went. I still no, like no, they're, st- they're still they're, around. No, they're I, gross. I, <laughs> they're not good. <laughs> new, new, uh. new Glarus has made Black Top again. They're brewing Black Top, which black is top their, is which is black. their black IPA. And when I... Oh, I was in Wisconsin for Thanksgiving, visiting my mom's fam- or my family up there. And coming back, I uh, anytime I set foot in that state, I will inevitably stop at a liquor store and then fill my trunk with New Glarus because I love it. Yeah. And I saw that they had Black Top again, and I went, "Oh, happy day! It's back!" Because they had, I think they just scrapped it. But all of a sudden, I go there, and, and yet here's Black Top again. 
And Maybe they were hoping people forgot about black IPAs. <laughs> <laughs> the haze, man. The next, the next time you go out there, is going to be a hazy IPA to bring. Yeah. Oh, New Glarus doing hazy IPAs? That doesn't seem. Sam Adams just did one. Mm. I, uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, All they right. still got Moon Man, so that yeah. will always keep me going back. Moon Man is the new spotted cow, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. So if you have abyss sitting around in your cellar, open them up. They are not tasting very good. You're, you're not getting anything out of them by leaving them in there right take them to your local distiller maybe turn them into some brandy bring them to or the, drink them now yeah bring them to the bottle share and be <laughs> the, the like i don't know the king of the bottle share be like look at this beer from 2007 guys <laughs> you weren't even drinking craft beer then <laughs> youngsters don't know about this <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get out of here and we'll keep going through the cellar here cheers Cheers. Cheers.